Hi DIYers, this is Frank at Alarm Grid. Today we're in the Alarm Grid lab working on the Honeywell L5210 Lynx Touch Alarm System and we'll be installing the L5100 Z-Wave module. This is a Z-Wave card that allows you to uh, speak Z-Wave to any, any Z-Wave devices. So uh, Z-Wave is an RF technology that is a sub gigahertz RF uh, frequency that basically allows you to control lights, locks, and thermostats in your home or business. Um, and if you have Z-Wave lights, locks, and thermostats installed, um, then you can use the, the Lynx Touch L5210 uh, to uh, control those devices. Um, there are water valves, other relays as well now. Um, for compatibility, you can email us at support at alarmgrid.com. It is important that you confirm compatibility. Uh, there are s specific devices that work better than others. Um, just because it's Z-Wave doesn't mean it's necessarily compatible. So with that said, uh, what we're going to do today is actually install the Z-Wave card. Um, so for starters, we actually already have a 3GL unit installed on this panel. So what we're going to do is, uh, is power down, remove the 3GL since the Z-Wave card actually sits underneath that cellular unit. Um, and then we'll insert the Z-Wave card and uh, put the 3GL back in. So um, you may come across the same issue if, if you've already had your system and you have a cellular unit installed already, which is why we're going to show you how to do that today. So the first thing we do is power down. When powering down, it doesn't matter the order, but you need to remove the battery and AC power. On the way back up, uh, I'll stress that you know, the, the DC power on the battery should be applied first. So the first thing we'll do is remove the battery. Uh, I have, I'm not using the LT cable, which Sterling usually uses uh, in our lab. We actually custom cabled everything here just to make things a little bit cleaner. Um, so with that said, normally we could now disconnect the LT cable from this port. In this case, because I ran custom cable back to the transformer, we're going to remove it at the wall power. Uh, never remove live this from, from the panel. When you have live power, you just don't want to have any shorts or anything like that. So I'm going to go over here and toggle the transformer, remove that from the wall. And now we have the panel completely powered off. You'll notice the LEDs on the unit went out. And uh, now we have the panel powered out. So uh, I'm going to remove the 3GL. There's three screws on the 3GL that hold it into place. So we'll loosen those up and lay those down here. And once we loosen these three screws, we're going to pull the, the, the 3GL off the board. Okay. Now the 3GL sits on a little multi-pin connectors that may come loose. So you just want to either put that back snug in there or keep it in the 3GL. It may come off. It may stay in the panel or come off into the back side of the 3GL. Just make sure we put it back on. It's nice and snug, but we'll go over that later. So I already have the Z-Wave card in here. You can see. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you. This is a Z-Wave card. You'll notice that it looks exactly like the Wi-Fi card. It's basically the exact same sh physical shape, except instead of speaking Wi-Fi, uh, this little circuitry is, is designed to speak Z-Wave. Um, this panel uh, will speak to lights, locks, and thermostats, and, and the new water valves as well. Um, so what we'll do is you'll see here on the side of the board, it has the gold connector, uh, similar to the Wi-Fi connector we did earlier. And what we'll do is sit this unit into that little slot there on the left of the board when the panel is swung down and the, and the speaker is on the top right. And we'll snap that right in, just push it on the back side of the black connector so it's nice and snug into the board. And that's pretty much as simple as, as it is to install the Z-Wave module. So now what we'll do is we'll take our 3GL, we'll make sure that the, the pin connector is in the board. If it did come out, possibly, into the board uh, if it's still in the 3GL, which in some cases it will stay in there. You can see that it either could do this or it would stay in the board. Um, either way, you just want to make sure it's lined back up there and nice and snug so you can kind of peer over the side here, snap that into place, put your three screws back in to tighten your 3GL on top of it. If you do have a 3GL, if you don't, um, you just would normally snap in your Z-Wave card and then reapply your battery power first by plugging in this little lead here and then reapply AC power. Now if you have the LT cable, again you can just simply plug it back into the port on the board 
If you're using a transformer with, with custom wire uh, like, like we have here, uh, you can just plug your transformer back into the wall. So I'll go ahead and do that once I get this 3GL screwed back in. Okay, so we have 3GL is nice and snug. You can barely see it from the shot here, but we have the, the Z-Wave card sitting underneath this, which would have been very difficult to get in with the 3GL over it. Now we have both back in. You'll notice we have the Wi-Fi card already in here. So I have the DC power on. At this point, you could have applied the LT cable. Um, if, if you have the transformer, then we can go ahead and close up. And snap that panel all the way shut. Make sure it's shut all the way nice and snug. And then we can plug the transformer back in. The panel will come up. And you'll notice that at the home screen in the automation section, you'll be able to now include Z-Wave devices. Uh, for further information on inclusion or exclusion on Z-Wave devices, as well as creating scenes, rules, and scheduling on the links panels uh, as far as Z-Wave control, uh, you can check out our channel. Uh, for further information, you can also email us at support at alarmgrid.com.